Welcome to the official AFL Fantasy Podcast with the Traders. G'day with the Traders. Thanks to Sportsbet. I'm Roy. I coach Destroy and I'm here with Warney. Coach of the Wandogs. And Calvin. Coach of Calvinita. Well, boys. Round we, two. Done. We are round two. We done are. and dusted. We are still dragging our feet a little bit at yep. this stage. A little bit. However... I don't think any of us are um, too disheartened with basically the structure of our team moving forward. We just need to tweak a few things. And I think um, at the moment we're flying the flag for the people that aren't off to an ideal start, but need that inspiration to keep going. You're going to flip it around. Yes. We've oh. done a bloody good job this preseason. Yes. Of educating there people. Are. Oh, yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. We've got 25,000 people yes. that are all going pretty well. Off yep. the back of our great work. Well, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I say it every year. Our advice, so sound. Yes. Maybe follow it. And there's the yes, other part. Yes, that's the issue. Following some of our yes. calls. But it's not Pokemon. We can't have them all. That is true, dog. And we picked the wrong ones. And only one person can win this, the whole thing. They can. Yeah, you can't have 25,000 cards. And it cards. still might be you it coming off such a good round. Too right, it might yeah, be. I've done some maths on that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Oh, yeah, yeah, what could be able to make up. <laughs> Already? <laughs> All right, let's have a look at our scores. Calvin Ada, you were the top scorer with 2,051. Yeah. Good comeback after order. being the worst of us last week. Order has been oh, restored. How is that order restored? Restored. That's order. God. It's not the hey, greatest well done. scores. I'm happy for you. Yeah, but I'm chipped away mm. back down. You know, you went on a patch last year where mm. your ranking improved every single round for like nearly that's 10 right. weeks straight. It's called a Roy We've set tip. ourselves yeah. up yeah. really well to do that then this year. Well, that's what I'm I going for. I must love doing that. Yeah. That's all I do. Uh, so, 18K, you're ranked, Cal. I'm yeah. just in front of you. I had a 20-39, so 12 points and... I've done a lot of maths and I've had a look, look, a, a look at a lot of players. Yes. Quite easily, that should have been reeled in. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> and I would have been the you winner. Are I'm sorry. With that. The scoring system doesn't work like what that. What they should have done. <laughs> you can't just look in at an it. ideal world. It, no. It's not good. So yeah. You're unbelievable. 17 and a half K for the Warnie. So technically, technically, he still won. Technically, out of us three. He, yeah. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> Warnie was one, Calvin was two. I was clearly. I just three. want to choose lunch today because I don't want Calvin to choose because it could be bad. He's a concern. Mm. He's as random with lunch choices as he is his fantasy team. Now, <laughs> right. I got what it was a centennial celebration. Bicentennial. Yeah, Bicentenary. that's right. Bicentennial. So, 1988, it's embarrassingly low. Um, and I went from that 18K ranking where you guys are now to 25. Oh, so yes. you're actually doing a reverse this year. I'm doing the reverse. No. <laughs> I think 25 is a better launching pad for yeah, my yeah, charts yeah, 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 towards yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's embarrassing, but I'm not hiding behind it. It will not be like that for long. Okay. I guarantee it. All right, things went well. Here it is! If that's what you did, Jenny, you're staying right up them. Rory Laird, let's go! Okay, I know exactly what he's going to say, because this time last week, oh. I was very angry at Rory. Oh, yes. Right? And I was saying mm. I'm going to trade him out. That was not bluffing the people out there. You need some more clarity about your rage trades and what you're actually doing, because you are very deceptive. Well, not deceptive. Can, that I went on AFL.com.au. That yeah. was all over social media. Okay. I didn't realise the dog was contagious. I had, You've caught it. Yeah, I had a... <laughs> I had a moment of weakness yeah. last Monday and I was like, get him out. Could be called a rocket. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah, there you 142 go. from the great man. Huge. He's back, snouts back. How many times did he go over 140 last year? I'll tell you. Once. Really? Isn't that funny? And he did it once he last just year. He used to hit 120s so as well for a joke. the only time he's going to do it this year? Uh, no, 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 because he is well and truly back. Mm. So he had his 39 touches and yeah. eight tackles. Yeah. Oh, he just he was running to such good spots. For and the one-twos, he had it all going. Yep. He was good. So it made him the second highest scorer of the round. Oh, Barry damn. Oliver with the 149. He was good. He um, was good too, yes. Right, Roy, who gets your plus three? My plus three goes to Nick Dacos. Man, oh, oh man. Oh, that my guy goodness. Is just an absolute jet. What a Did miss. Did you see... Power and Hinckley swagged into that game with a bit of confidence. And when Hinckley was asked about him, um, basically said, I'm not sure if you understand, but back flankers actually have to man up on a forward flanker. <laughs> um, no. So when Lockie Jones was his forward flanker... <laughs> his eyes lit up. The right choice not to man <laughs> up on him. 100%. He didn't man up on him. Lockie ended up with about four touches. Yeah. 
Gave him a bath. He's just an amazing player. He is. Potentially leading the brown low. I think he is. Leading my brown low, he is. Too right, he would be. Definitely. Absolute machine. I'm going to give mine to Will Day, who got a 92. So that's backing up after his 98. You got something you want to say to Roy? I think so. Expectations. Dog? No. Say something. Meeting expectations. Meeting. Meeting. Go on, dog. There's my back. Pat him on the back. Go on. There you go. Well done. You're welcome. I'm happy that you are going well (sighs) based on that. Well, not going well, but going no, all you're not right. Happy not <laughs> a, you not happy that I'm going better than you? B, I'm not going well. Anyway. No, uh, no but Will Day, though, <laughs> that was a that was probably one of the more concerning picks I had going into yep. oh, yes. round one. Yeah, definitely. And he's doing what? Well, he's doing more than he needs to at the moment. And I guess the big part of the game is that cash generation. Yes. This is where we're faltering a little bit with some of the guys. If we get a couple of good scores out of them early... Yeah. Uh, then that's a positive thing because that is where I'm going to go with my negative three. Oh, Spiller! Get off, Queen! It was the most disgraceful display I've ever seen. Get Mitchell! Because it's just not acceptable! Dom Sheed. You weren't okay. enjoying him, This is you? the thing <laughs> about <laughs> Dom Sheed. We picked him as a mid-pricer. Mm, you yep. want a good score early just to boost some cash, Jen, and we just yep. don't have... We haven't had that from him in the mm. two weeks. He doesn't look good either. That's the issue. He looks like a bloke that's missed a lot of footy. I feel like he goes through patches where yeah. you're like, he's back. He's yep. back to that 90 guy. And then he'll just he'll suck you in the face with a reminder. Yeah. Well, and that's what um, Sunday was. Like, it was just a hard watch. Even the first half was a hard, hard watch, yeah. which he ended up getting himself to, must have been close to 50. Yeah. Then he had a 9.3rd quarter and a 14.4th quarter. Yeah, <laughs> and he did a bit of that in the last minute of the fourth. Yeah. Wow. And the most frustrating thing about that is that could be Setterfield. I know. Oh, you know what I mean? Hang on, I'm feeling sick. So this is why we are feeling like we're a mile behind people because we went there, they went there. And it's significant. And it's different. a lot of points we difference. Did, they zagged. Mm. And it's not good. So that's the issue. And that's he's going back like on that plus three of Will Day. Those big scores, that's going to help him yeah. Get his price up there to be able to move on at some point because yep. I don't think he's going to be a keeper. Wouldn't it be great if he was? But um, with Sheed, he's just floundering. Yeah, he's, he is. He's doing what we've paid for him. Yeah, we want him to be doing more than what we paid well, for him. That's why you pay for someone in that price range with that expectation to go the 100%. fifteen to twenty. He's a glorified rookie at the moment. Yep, Sheed. Scoring like it's like, like it. getting outscored by rookies. So yeah. Oh, what not about good. yours, Cow? Well, mine's not even a rookie. Last week I sat here, and I know that Hornbag, Jason Horn Francis, is going to be like a barometer yeah. for my team. Yeah. However, last week he played out of his absolute skin for a 90. Yes. Right, and he played really, Good really CBAs. well. Yep. Mm. So everything's there for him. 40 points. Ability's not. That is ridiculous. 40 points. Mm. That might as well be Fergus bloody Green out there. No, like you, you guys always do with Horn Francis... Take away his free kicks and he still had a good score. <laughs> he gave a w- No, he didn't. He still didn't have a good score. Oh, well, <laughs> true. He would have got to 60. Yeah. 60. Mm. Nah, that's really bad. It is bad. And six frees against. That hurts. Yeah, it's not good. It means he's close to the ball. Yeah, it does. He must be near The it. issue is, and this is what we talked about even last week, so this is why I wasn't keen on anyone really launching into it, picking him after last week's 90, is that he played out of his skin for that 90. Yeah. Mm. So... So you but know he he's got to be go. Than he's that. got to go. A bloody, he's a number one pick. I feel like I need to apologise. Yeah, to warning. You bring it back to me. Give it back to yes, me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, warning that you had to copy me. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> How really about am. you make make up your own <laughs> bloody mind on why something? Why didn't you? Why did you try to sell him so hard? I didn't sell anything. Yeah, you did. He was cheap. Uh, oh yeah. God. All right, Roy. Mm. Oh, all right, here we go. Well, I struggled to find you got one another because they went so well. <laughs> <laughs> but bloody oath, I've got a clear one. Okay. I don't know if I'm directing it at the player, though. Because okay. it actually wasn't his fault, but he has to wear the brunt of it, okay? So I'm giving it to that big lump <laughs> that is <laughs> Sean Darcy. looking thing. He is a big unit. He's, he's, a, big, he's, he's a man. A now, lump, okay. So I'm giving it to Sean Darcy. Um, I brought him in <coughs> um, as opposed to the obvious number one, English, because I needed the money to make Sheed. I got rid of Dom Sheed last oh. week, dog. Well done. Yeah. Well done. I oh. needed because well, I. Were well, you going to tell anybody? It. Yeah, I did. Oh. You, geez, I've been very honest with what I've done. Oh, this boy. year. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks. I haven't laughed like Very that in a long honest. time. Um, <laughs> and you blokes are out there continually deceiving. Continually deceiving. The um, public. Now, Sean Darcy. Okay. Just a quick rant. 30 seconds. Why the hell <laughs> they played him at full four? Now, people have been coming at me with, like, you idiot. They've got two rucks. That was always a problem. Yep. Yada, yada. This is what I... I did. So I watched last week's Fremantle game. Yep. When Luke Jackson was anywhere near the middle of the ground, they looked hopeless. Okay. So I thought, what coach in their right mind would possibly put Luke Jackson back in there? Okay. As anything resembling a number one Ruckman. Now, basically the first half, it the keys were thrown to Jackson yep. in the middle. Big Dars, he can hardly move, stands in full forward, yep. offers nothing. Yep. Negative one at quarter time. Was he really? <laughs> that felt really good bringing him in. I reckon. Anyway, next quarter, recovered. Okay. 11 at half time. Oh, wow. So it was a big turnaround. Did a lot better. Now, he was still um, playing second fiddle to the headless chook, Jackson, yep. in the middle yep. of the ground. <laughs> now, in the second half when they were getting flogged, oh, what could we possibly do in there? Maybe give our midfielders... A li- at least a look at it. Yeah. So they did, and he had a 50-point second half. Recovered to a 60. Okay. okay. So I'm taking that. He's still got to wear the negative three. Yes, of course he does. However, yep. it was not his fault. Now, what did they What did they do? Why did they put Jackson in there? Was it one, to give him confidence? Mm-hmm. Was it two, to say, hey, that $1 million a year, that's well spent. Well, just watch him. Yeah. <laughs> or was it three... Hey, they've got a 34, 35-year-old Ruckman. Let's get our athletic beast in there to just teach him a lesson. Yep. Well, that didn't work, did it? He had 10 touches, Luke Jackson. You know how many marks he's taken so far this year? Nope. One. One? Yeah. It's interesting, though, because your mate Darcy plays West Coast this it's week. interesting, all right. The matchup is juicy as... If he's in the middle. Because Matt Flynn had 110. Before that, Charlie Street out of Comden had an 80 yeah. against... Uh, Williams. Yeah. So you would assume if he is in the middle again. And X Airy, currently yep. leading points per minute ruck. That yep. was against West Coast too. So he will have a very good game here on the condition yeah. that it's uh, coached properly. Yeah. Well, when he played number one ruck versus Goldie last year, he had 120. Oh, but boy. he's not going to score sitting at full forward, the big Dars. No, so his CBAs must have gone through the roof in that last half, like being mm. in there the whole time. And even... It's a perfect example. Someone got into me on Twitter about just looking at the CBAs. Yep. When, with the, the ruck roll there, because it wasn't like, for example, that game um, with heaps of stoppages that we talked about with Wits the yep. week before. So there were times where if you just looked at the timing of CBAs, it doesn't truly reflect the role that they were playing. Jackson was clearly the number one ruck in the first half. Darcy was clearly the number one ruck in the second half. Well, mm. so negative three, long story, sorry. I just need to get it off my chest. <laughs> it's about therapy, I reckon, it is. Roy, it is. this, because yeah, thanks, dog. we've thanks got a very, um, an interesting season to follow you this year. Yeah, It's I been know. a journey the so world far. is against yeah, you at the moment. It, it is, and it was going to be a straight bat year, but what, I lasted till, <laughs> that, what was it, game three, before <laughs> straight bat wasn't going to cut it anymore. <laughs> God, my voice is breaking. Uh, uh, right, uh, quickly looking at the weekly winner for the w- uh, the weekly winner for the week or for the round. Uh, Yippee Kai, yay, Mother Tucker. <laughs> Very careful. Well done. Uh, Twenty two seventy one. So yeah, two hundred and something points more than us. That's a um, great score. Happy for you, Alex. <laughs> well done, Alex. <laughs> well Alex. Well done. Now the overall leader is Baron Mundy's Fish Shack uh, in his team. There, it's got four thousand four hundred eighty nine points. Bad. Yeah, that's a good four hundred. Behind we are. So, a dude like that has just started with your set of field. Yeah, yeah. Good players. He went the good player strategy. Yeah. Good team. Now, just uh, on that, though, the <laughs> hat watch, player. because remember, if you finish in at the top 100, you receive a hat, an AFL fancy hat, with your number on it. Currently, 100th, pl- 100th place is Brett and his team, the Scranton Scragglers. Uh, 4,305 points. So, Cow, only about 250 or so for us. <laughs> oh, that's possibly right. way too you many. Guys are right. You're not that far beyond that, though, Roy. Oh. 
I just need these guys it's, it's, two it's, weeks. It's achievable. It's achievable. Okay, the hat okay. It's achievable. It's achievable. Yeah. I'll say it. I'll tell the company line. Yeah, it's well, achievable. It's always achievable. All right, let's have a look at the cash cow for round the cash cows. Yeah, Michael yep. Barlow medal for round two. All right, five votes. None other. Control C, Control V. Harry Sheezer, 127 <sighs> points. He had another day out. 30 disposals, eight marks, six tackles. So he's had 30, uh, 64 disposals across two games. His first two games, Michael Barlow's the only one that's done better, and that's 67 in his first two games. Look, so it's amazing start to his career. This guy's doing amazing things. Not only has he got me still enjoying fantasy, <laughs> yep. he has got me liking North Melbourne. That's amazing. Oh, it incredible. is the amazing. biggest turnaround in history, and it's all on the she's. So it's not just because of the, the Freo Ruck disaster for you that you don't like, that you're barracking for North Melbourne on Saturday night. Well, the I've she's never been well. a big fan of Freo, but this, yeah, the she's got me over. I've, um, I've heard his name thrown out as a vice-captain option. It could be. Well, this, he scored more than my captains this year. Yeah. I've heard his name thrown out roll on 22. Oh, wow. Holy reactionary. <laughs> Will Ashcroft, <laughs> he ended up with a 90 points for his 31 disposal. Still no marks for him. Both games. He hates hasn't a, taken hates a mark a grab, yet. Uh, Anthony Caminiti was very good with two goals and the nine marks helped his score up to a 79. Ollie Hollands on Thursday night, 77. A few taking that off the bench and some people playing on field as we need to. 20 disposal, five marks. He just runs and runs and runs. Very good. Mm. And uh, Ruben Jinby, 71. So he's polled in both games so far in the Michael Barlow medal for the cash cow of the year. Those tackles, just a score build. It's very nice. So mm. the leaderboard, Sheasel out on 10. Wow. Maximum votes in each game with Ashcroft and Chandler having four apiece. Here's the news of the week you need to know on the official AFL Fantasy Podcast. All right, let's get into the big news from the week. Let's start with a big midfielder there in Jack Steele, broken mm. collarbone. Did you see the X-ray of it as well? Yes. Bad. And he played on and turned up. He did that last year yeah. as well. He's just a He's unbelievable. So anyway, he's, he's going to be out for a while. Steel. It looks like at least a month. It'll be a while. Um, I have even seen some commentary about going, if he's back in a month, like, there's risk in that. hundred so percent. It's think, a bit of a have mercy moment. They've yep. started well. Yeah. Yep. It sucks for him. And I guess the good thing is, we'll talk about options for him later on, but at least he's been good. He's stayed yeah, high. That's the thing. Yeah. If you haven't copped it, unlike Max Gone, where you've copped that one. Yeah. So he dropped 71K. So he hurt his knee. The good news is that it's not an ACL. Mm. Uh, bad news for him. He's out four to six weeks or so. And... He needs to be traded, so yep. it's not like you can hold on to that. So his break even at one seventy now means that his price is going to get nice and juicy for it anyone uh, not with set with and forget rucks. Yeah. That you might want to upgrade one of them. Hey, guess what? Can I just flag something with you, dog? Because yes. I know you're, you're very smug. He's been oh yep. smug. You you call it set and forget. It's wait till injury strikes, mate. Yeah, you're going to be very sad, man. You know what? He hasn't had a single injury this year. Oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> I had Kelly last week. Set and forget until injury, mate. Have you had an injury yet? You actually have No, he hasn't. I have Just oh. like stirring you up. Yeah, no, but... Got he's, him! He's, he, the smugger you are, the closer you are to an injury. Ooh, I better tone it back down again. No, you're in a world of trouble, I reckon, this week. Uh, right, other injuries <laughs> of, of concern and of note. Um, Jacob Hopper, late in the game, yes. uh, crumbled under a tackle from Lairdy, went off, but he came back on. He did. So... That's positive in that sense. Um, Dusty was subbed out of that game with hamstring tightness. So mm. they've got a, a shorter turnaround yeah. this week. So that, that will be one to watch. Nat Fife was a laid out, uh, that plantar fasciitis. Yeah. Um, so he's going to miss a couple, I would say, through there. Zerk Thatcher for the Bombers out with an ankle. So that might just mix up things in their back line when yep. they've got that nice matchup this week against the Saints as well. Yes. Finn Callahan Cow, one of your boys there out on that wing, hurt his shoulder. Um, he came back on, struggled. Yeah. But then had 30 points in the last he quarter. He looked really so that's good in gotta, the last. That's yeah. got to be a positive thing for you because Jacob Ware, he hurt his shoulder as well. He was subbed out, but it was after. Yeah. Callahan did his. So yeah. Callahan's can't be too bad. But will be a watch, though, I would say, this week. Oh, too right, to would see be. if mm. they rest him if they him. need yeah. to. Yeah, because, I mean, they they want to protect Callahan. And if, yep. 
if he is out, well, then you've got to move him, don't you? Too right, you do. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so oh, some copper bullets everywhere, eh? No, nah, he'll play. <laughs> Jeez. Still haven't copped. A couple of uh, <laughs> injuries, or oh, head knock ones, because that is the talk of the year. Connor Rosie copped the knee to the head, but he played on. Yeah. Um, Do you see the size of the egg on Isaac Heaney's oh, head? That was an egg. Mm. Yeah. Big egg. Mm. Um, and Paddy Parnell, he copped it from that broad tackle, and he was subbed out. Uh Broad goes to the tribunal. Yes. So that's a three plus weaker is what they yes. come out as. So he's he doesn't just get a, an no. offer from the MRO. Mm. It goes on. The MRO did suspend holiday. Ryan Burton for two weeks and Jai Simpkin, he gets one week there. Yep. For North Melbourne. Um a couple of other things. Uh Nat Nui Nyo, unlikely to be mm. back for the Derby. So it's anyone good that for was Luke Jackson. Two right it is. <laughs> Uh, and Kelly should be back, Roy. Apparently, you held. Yeah, so that I did. So um, that was my way to attack um, by taking a little hit last week. I thought if I get Kelly back this week with a little bit of luck, which Kingsley has um, said they're very confident on, um, it'll feel like I get two good players in this week. That's good. Yeah. It's good uh, if it happens. Now, VFL started on the weekend. You can be watching VFL live on afl.com.au and the AFL Live app. A couple of the key scores there. Jacob Van Royen, he um, scored 102. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. He spent a bit of time in our teams in the yeah, preseason. Yeah, so it could be one as the basement sort of players there. Um, as we go through, he kicked a goal. Had six hit outs. Does he need, like, could he be in for some help there with Max out if they want to oh, get another yeah, big in. Yeah. Could be a thing. Um, Aaron Hall had 120. That's what he's probably going to do Jeez. all year. Is he going to get into the team? 37 disposals, seven marks and two tackles for him. He has been racking up in the VFL. Someone's got to come in with Simpkin out. Mm. Could it be him? He'd be every chance. He would be a chance. Two right, then would be. affects Sheasel and Zeeble. Well, that's both true Both we well. talk about. Uh, yeah, that in a is bit. true. Uh, Essendon. Versus GWS in the VFL. Bombers flogged them because they're flying. Um, as a club. <laughs> Hind had 152. 152. 41 disposals, 11 marks that. Hobbs had 149. Boys, um, settle 34 down. disposals, is this 10 the marks, two goals. That club is humming. Well, wow, what GWS a team. GWS were an EFL club. Wow. And Stringer is back. So he'll probably come back in this week, I would say. So yes. 22 disposals, a goal. Had an 81. And I would assume... It would have been managed minutes and that sort of stuff through that. But oh, it's well, not about the scoring, but he's back. He'll be Will going he be able to one. break into that well-oiled machine? <laughs> <laughs> nah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. He might have to do his time in the twos for a little bit, uh, little bit Get longer. Get some fitness up. He'll be right, though. Hi, I'm Nat Edwards. The only place to get your daily footy news inside 20 minutes is on AFL Daily. Get the jump on other fans each weekday morning as AFL Daily sets the agenda on footy's biggest stories. A no-holds-barred, introspective look at the AFL world hits your podcast inbox each morning at 7.30. So subscribe to AFL Daily wherever you get your podcasts to never miss a moment. Let's talk the big issues of the week then. So mm. the players that might need to be traded out or yep. even the tra- players that might need to be traded in this week. Let's start with those injuries there. We'll start with Jack Steele. Yep. So 969K, what are we doing? I think you go straight to the roll on 22 and have a look at the top three. So you've got the $2 million men there, Laird and Oliver. Yep. They are just two really safe pillars that you can just rely on as VCs or Cs. Um, if you've got a weak team like mine where you don't have one of those big dogs, it's quite hard and it leaves you a long way off the mark if you're not getting more than like 110 from yeah, a captain. Yeah. So um, looking at those guys, um, Brayshaw's obviously just under a million, million and I think those three are clear cut from I the think rest. So. so I think they're all really good captain um, options. Under that, sorry. I was just going to say with Laird then. Yeah. So it's your opportunity to get him, do you think? Because of he's where bottomed he's bottomed out. Yeah. yeah. He's certainly got an attainable. I think it's like 130 or so. 135 yeah. is his break even. Which, it's within reach. He'll probably hit a 120 and go down slightly. But So the Port Adelaide matchup though, is that any form of concern? It is a concern, dog. So last four scores against them, 116, 90, 105 and a neat 100. Yeah, so, so nothing Roy, to write home Brayshaw about. Brayshaw or... Laird. 
I think it's, um, do you know what's really interesting about this? It could go either way. So long term, I think it's Laird. However, Brayshaw looked amazing. Mm. And he looks amazing because he is actually amazing. Now, the thing is, they've got a nice draw coming up as well. But all through the media this week is, it's going to be focused on the Fremantle midfield because they're supposed to be a top four You're leading the charge. Teams. Yeah, I am trying to get a few <laughs> things out there. But it's also coming down to their <coughs> midfielders, right? So yep. they're all in the right age demographic. Yep. They should be the ones that are teaching everyone a lesson. Yep. But they're getting, they're getting criticised for some of the possessions they're actually getting. Oh, no. So, yeah, they're not actually bursting through with clearance right. and things like that. They are getting pretty much some cheap marks and kicks around the ground. So are they going to say, brace or change what you're currently doing? I wouldn't think so. It's yep. going to have to come from someone else. But there is a massive flag at the moment that everyone is putting pressure on this Fremantle midfield. So he's got the least... He's got a little bit of shakiness around him. Something could change for him. I don't think it will, but it's more likely to than the safety of Laird or Oliver. It's interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Agree. And he, last year against the uh, the Eagles, uh, Brayshaw went 78 and 95. They are by far his worst team to score against. He's only right. got one ton in his career against them and he's played them. Eight times. That's interesting. Now, once again, I don't think he's going to have to change because he just works his ass off. Yep. He tackles, he gets open for marks and things like that. But they are definitely big on them not having any clearance, um, explosive clearance in the middle. Now, if you're not going one of them, who I would probably still order, I would probably go Laird Oliver Brayshaw. Okay. At the moment, yep. um, in my order of preference there. If you're going up, now if you're going down, I think you're going. Way down. So I wow. think you're going to Green or Setterfield. Now, my Jeez. order of selection would be chase the extra near 100K, go Setterfield first, yep. and, and then Green. That's about 250. Yeah, and then you just enjoy spending that on an upgrade somewhere else. That's what I would do with Steel. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'd So there's going, no one in that little... I don't think so. ...group. You're not an LDU fan. Um, no, but he's definitely one that I would tick off. To him? Yes, enough to tick. Like I said, um, Sheezel's made me like North Melbourne. Now I've opened <laughs> to LDU. Look, you might look at other North Melbourne yeah. players and not just... Play the problem is, I, I love what they're doing, and they'll probably... I hope they smoke Hawthorne um, out here this week. After so they after they go 3-0, and probably, yeah. there's going to be some... There's going to be the losses that they're yeah. going to come. So... Um, LDU's shown that he can score. In okay, then well, just so. irrelevant talk. On topic, but slightly off, off topic. Does Finn McGuinness go to LDU this week? I think so. Or does he go to the Big Shees? I think he goes to LDU. I think he goes to LDU. Mm, how he's deployed will be very interesting. It will because he can play anywhere on the ground. Finn to yes, to right Yeah. Yep. Uh, right. Okay. Jack Steele trade obviously now. 100%. Max Gone is a trade as yeah. well. Okay. So he dropped a bit of coin. Yes. Which hurts that a little bit along the way there for him. So he's down now at $849,000. What are you going to try to do with him? Like, there's only one answer. It, it, it's, you're dead if right. you can get to the set and forget, you get smug, you feel good about yourself. That is definitely what you do. The English... Take it from me. Don't Marsh. mess around in the ruck department. Yes. Yeah. Would you consider Brody Grundy? Yes. So his next two matchups. Here we go. You've got me. Oh, okay. I'm happy to muck around so again. If in the you ruck want to department. muck around in your ruck department, there is an option to do yeah, that. Yes. So Brody Grundy yes. up against Sydney, who my mate Jared Witts had a 137 against. Yeah. Then next week he's up against West Coast, yeah. who are only rocking Williams, and old mate Matt Flynn has 110 so against him. So he should go back to back 110s. Yes, he should. Mm. 100%. But I'm with you. You can't. If you've taught me anything this year, Roy, <laughs> it's not to mess around with your ruck. It's just but not a position you do anything. But have you learned that ordinary. in previous years yes. as well? Yeah, I forget. And the year before, before, that. before, and like year before that. For just two players. Geez, they take up a lot of time and a lot of trades. And a lot of lost sleep and yep. headaches and holes in walls <laughs> and broken phone. They're very costly if you they muck are. around in the ruck department. Too right. There's no other mucking around to do, is there? What about no. Flimberger? About Flynn no, no. We did flag that <laughs> Flynn would be good um, this week yep. in that matchup. Now, as much as we're laughing at me here, if <laughs> if common sense prevails over in the West, 
and the media put enough pressure on, Darcy was going to make up for last week's effort. Do you reckon? Yes, with a 120. Okay. Mm. I think he can as well. Yeah, so definitely. Six goals, is he? Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do that to me. <laughs> Cal, you wrote on here. Form of bullying. Okay. When is it too late? Well, and you've got some names that we want to talk because about. Because these three guys here are the most traded in. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and we're talking Setterfield, Zebu, yeah. and Nick Dacos. Not too late for him. Let's either. talk about Setterfield first. 9% ownership. He's averaging 126. Wow. He's already gone up over 100,000. He has a break even of 20 through, uh, 27. Yep. yep. And his scale of hardness looks pretty nice yep. over the next five weeks. It's not too late. He's a bargain. It's not too late because he's going to go up again and again in the next three or four weeks yep. to a point where you're like, now it's too late. Yeah. Nine percent ownership is the difference between these guys who are in the ta- yeah. the hat territory at the moment yep. and us. Yeah. So are you you chasing that then and going to just cancel well, those out? Is but it, is, is it he, called chasing? Is it real? Is it real? It's um, but it's he's finally at a club is, where he's respected. Yeah, and it's oh, <laughs> it, exactly, dog. <laughs> no, a, I agree with this. And there's a you spot know for him I was as well. Of a fan of him, and he was disrespected, underutilized, and he's showing that. And good on him. He's at a team where there's no depth, and he needs to play. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, so, yes, but it's exactly. been an absolute need for the Bombers, though. That it's not. 90% CBA. 90% yep. CBAs last week. That'd be more than Drapes. Mate, it is <laughs> way more than Drapes. Him and Merritt both had 90 each. So it's, yeah, yeah no, he's definitely um, an option. And 9% ownership, even though you're just matching people ahead of you with that now, you can still back the rest of your structure yeah, yeah, against yeah. whatever they've got. Like, you can make ground up on. I'm so happy with that. We're saying it's not too late. You can still go with Setterfield this Bloody week. Oath. It's a, 100% a, you can. It's second week, and it's an absolute cash grab slash All cash right. maker. This is, and that's an issue for some coaches, though. Roy, if yes. that sat him at an M2. Don't look at it. Just do it. Because that's what's going to yep. happen with you, isn't it? Oh, probably. <laughs> he's going to 126. Well, well, Where is my strong line? I actually don't <laughs> have one. Based on average, <laughs> based on average, he's number three. This year. Yeah. Yeah, get three. him in Good and player. Hey, he could end up being M1 if I swing a few things. Oh, and okay. the Bombers are only going to continue to be this good as All well, right. aren't they, from exactly. here on? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Setterfield is still very much reachable. What about, we talked about him last week, the Z Bull? Lock it in. You need him. No, I do. He's gone up nearly, Horn Francis nearly Horn 100K. Francis. Break even of 26. Only 5% of coaches are on, and obviously that number is going to change over the course of the week. He's got Hawthorne here at Utah's mm-hmm. this Saturday. Pig mm. Park. Z Park. Z Park. Oh. Z Pig Park. Z Pig Park. Um, he's, his matchups over the next few weeks look amazing as yeah. well. He's got St Kilda in about five weeks' time, which could also be very juicy for he him. He might have 28 he's, marks. The, the thing with him... In our back line, The then. thing with him is he will get defender status. Yeah. Won't he, dog? Well, of course he will. Oh, good. He's he's ticked like that as long as he plays defender. the four games that yeah. he needs to ahead of round six, then he will get it because he's done nothing other than play in the back line. And then... So then he'll be a forward defender. We can chuck him and the old she's back there. Straight into North the realm of 22. And our, two, our defender line that has been weak... Gets All boosted. of a sudden, looks pretty strong. So, no. are you happy to pay six hundred and twenty-nine thousand yep. for so a the, veteran? The who is yeah, and that's the flag. The flag prone. is the body. Yeah, but you just got to take the risk and ride this cash. It's a pretty breeze-free roll too. That's a bonus. Yeah, I think that's a massive bonus mm. for his ten marks a day. Hundred percent. Aaron Hall's the other little flag. That if is. he does come in, yeah, that moves someone. They can't move the she's. Because no. you'd be silly too. Yep. Um, and yeah, all three would have to be back there, I guess, wouldn't they? Mm. Let's, you go old school and throw Aaron, Aaron Hall back in the guts for a closer to a like to like. No, that ain't like. happening. Remember, he used to play yeah, he did. Though. Especially at Gold Coast. Mm. That was. Anyway, we'll oh, wait and see on that. He won't get in the team. My next one, this is the third most traded in player, sub. is Nick Dacos, who is going at an average of 116. Break even of 71. He's owned by nearly half of the fantasy coaches. Yep. He's going up every single week. Mm. Pre-season I, stitcher. I just feel that I will be the guy this year that just never owns him. That will hurt. 
Yeah. Because if you've got a crap team, but you've still got some nice players to look at, you yep. can still find enjoyment. Still a nice value next to his name. Oh, 100%. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Mm. I think a guy like Setterfield is more of a priority when I've got Dom Sheed sitting there. I understand that. He was interesting... Dacos too, because he was taking all those kick-ins and playing on, but he even got centre bounces as well. I think he had about a quarter of them for mm. the uh, Pies on the weekend. So his role, whatever he does, he's going to be out of rack. Yeah, he's just a good player. Now, the other name I want to talk about, and we've sort of covered him very quickly before, Rory Laird is in the top five most traded in players this yep. week. People are jumping back on. Because a lot of people jumped off. Yeah, okay. He's still worth a million dollars. Yes. So his price hasn't really changed that much. Break even of 135. Mm. We reckon he's probably a little bit under that. But how are you getting him? Oh, that's it, isn't it? It's, it's a McRae through... up. It's a it's yeah. a someone like that. It's a Jack Steele up. It's that's what people are looking at doing here. Mm. Or it's any other underperforming primo that isn't quite cutting it, Man. and they're just going, I'm going to fix that up because this guy's a 140. Mm. So he only dropped $18,000 last week. That's not much. When will you get him, Roy? Maybe this week. Really? Mm. So that could be your McRae move? Potentially. And Miss Setters? No, get, him get both. both. As well. The problem is, Ooh. his record mm. against Port... Only maybe. Port are one of the hardest teams to score against this year and even last year. Dacos last week had a 117 against Port. Mm. That's the only midfielder that's turned up against them this year. And you were, if we're counting him as a midfielder. Yeah. Laird's different. He is built different. But 116 and 90 are the two scores he had on them last year. Yeah. But if he's back tackling, finding the peel 30 plus times, yeah. there's your 120. Mm. He's just a little workhorse. He's back. Because basically he doubled his possessions from the yeah. first round. As long as it's quadrupled. Not be 35 degrees, he's going big. He hates the hot weather. Mm, he does. Lockout lifted on Sunday night and people have been making their trades, their rage trades. Most traded in. We've got Will Setterfield there. Uh, he's the most popular by a long way because of that average of 126. Jack Zebel, Nick Dacos, Luke Davies, Uniac, and Will Day. So I guess a few of those players there, you're saying that's a move. Possibly, well, Setterfield or Davies Uniac for the steel owners. Yeah. Maybe the McRae traders as well. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, you've got Zeebel's that forward option to get as the mid-price sort of guy. And in the back line, it's getting your day cost or getting your will day. All good options. Yes. Yes, 100% definitely. 100% they are. People right. are switched on. The most traded out, Jack McRae is the most traded See out you, at the mate. moment. Wow. Just ahead of Jack Steele, and that would be more about ownership. But, yeah. McRae still, and then Max gone, who is injured. Dom Sheed, people are showing the door to. And also Tanner Bruin, who really hasn't done exactly what we no. wanted to see. Uh, look, the unfortunate thing for Bruin owners is up until, and this you'd say, how is this even related? But in the, in the shifting of players, it has occurred. So until um, Tom Stewart went down, mm -hmm. Bruin's role... Was looking good. Was really good. Oh, yeah. And then in the... The flow-on effect, he, yeah, he's got to go. Mm. It's not good. All right, let's have a look at our trades then, Roy. It has been what's going on with Roy's team show. So, All right. what are you doing? Well, you guys will love this. A uh, bit of range trading. <laughs> so, I'm going McRae to Setterfield yep. and Bont to Zeebel. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. I hate the dogs. So, you are just now? getting yeah. off old mate... Bevo. Yep. Who's Bevo on us all. And he's already said he's going to be innovative. Yeah. So you're saying, no, I cannot have McRae and Bond. No, I can't. I cannot keep watching that. It is a sinking ship. It's hard to watch. Um, now, that would obviously be a cash grab, um, but I need to somehow fix this rabble of a team. Maybe I do just go upgrade, upgrade, plus the cash that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Calvin, what it are you doing? It is rage trade, though. Well, I'm going to the bull as well, and I'm doing that with Horn Francis. Enough's enough. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. 40 points, mate. That is you should done be, and dusted. You just should be grateful you ever got a 90 out of it. Yeah, oh, you're spot on. Yeah. So he's averaging now the same as what he averaged last year, and I thought that was cheap. Yeah. No. Cheap uh, for a reason. Well, I'm getting rid of Horn France as well, and he's going to Zebul. And the current rage trade, this probably doesn't stick for the week, but I'll be honest about it, Calvinator, <laughs> is that McRae to Setterfield as yeah. well. Just looks so much nicer. And seeing the red and black... 
in the midfield while they're sitting pretty well, two and zip. That's what it used is to a look nice like thing. with the red, white and blue in there. It yeah, used yeah. to just look so aesthetically pleasing. But it's Bevo but. has bevoed us something shocking. He has. And I don't think we can I don't think we can it's stick the worst with it's him. ever been, dog. That's bad. Being innovative. And the hard thing is we've got to make these decisions oh, Thursday do. night they play. That's gonna hurt. <sighs> it's big. It is. Got a question for the traders? Tweet the boys at AFL Fantasy or head to facebook.com forward slash AFL Fantasy official. All right, let's have a look at the questions that are pumping through on Twitter. You can find me at Warney DT. At Roy DT. At, at Roy Calvin DT. DT. Got you, mate. Sorry, I was saucing. I was saucing. I'm, oh. saucing. I'm always working, you boys. Even you if I forget to us? plug myself. Did, um, no, I was more selfish. Sourcing today. <laughs> Who do you reckon I was sourcing about? Uh, Darcy. That useless big <laughs> <laughs> All right, we threw the questions out there on Twitter to go and chuck yours through. So, Ryan, had a great w- week. Well done, mate. Good on you, Ryan. Hopefully no injuries during the week and not many Red Dot rookies pop up. Uh, oh, do we have one? Could Chesa be a Red Dot rookie? Yeah, his time's get getting close. Yep. Yes, yes, he's um, a chance. Looks like I can move on McGrath, but not sure who to have 123k in the bank. I already have Doherty, Dacos, Constable. Should I go down today or straight up to someone? But who? Mm. You can still go today. I think you can. Yep. And on the back side of that, surely you can fix something. Yeah. And I don't know who else is in your team, Ryan, but like if you had one of those mid prices that you could get up to it, like if you had Callahan. Mm. Yeah. You'd be quite happy to jump off that. Yep. Because of the shoulder knock, yep. let alone. I've got a serious question. Mm. I don't know what on earth you McGrath owners were actually expecting. He's getting it done. Oh. Well, he got it done with 88 in the end, but it wasn't looking pretty. It wasn't Defender. looking pretty before that. I'm What's with you, Roy. I'm with you. Um, however, there are other people around him that could have his spot that are doing that. Much and that's better. the issue. How? Not many. Well, you had tell to spend him who to go to. Dacos, just go to Dacos. Yeah, but now it's a lot more dollars. It was like I think it was about eighty k. Don't, don't go. Don't, don't go live to in the dog. past. Don't Trust go me. to sick dog. It's no, not a good place to be. One point less. Yeah, that's not a good trade. We glossed over that. that a little bit there, Cal. Yeah, that. that's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Bounce back. Week. Long term. Yeah, you didn't just get him for the week, did you? As long as he's not pulling that bloody grumpy head. Yeah, he was grumpy. Back out here, it should be fine. Oh yeah, I'm gonna stand behind the goals and yell at him. Yes, that works. Aiden, Sheed to Zebel. And a red dot down. Sheed to Zebel, yep. correct. Yep, yep. Or do you go Sheed to Setterfield with Peddler down? All right. The cash so out of down. those two in Zebel, who will get defender status, and Setterfield, who is the one that you need the most? <sighs> if Setterfield can keep, if Setterfield goes at a hundred from here, but then I guess Zebel could as well. I know, as a defender, as a defender, and cheaper. Oh, so I'm going to say Zebel. Yeah, you probably have to. Mm, it's, it's a tough one. It it's is. It's bad, but the risk and Setterfield's real. And his he's, he's role. I mean, mm. both if, of their role. God. If you normally have a bit of a stress-free weekend, mm. go for... Um, Setterfield. Yeah. So yeah. Go, <laughs> play the straight at bat. Yeah. Because Zebel's a bit more of a slog sweep. Yeah, he is. <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be He's good here at Zipig Park this week. All right, Jack wants to know, uh, can we trade out McRae to someone like Will Setterfield? I think we've... <laughs> too yeah, high, you, you can. We've ticked it off for a Monday, for a race trade. Yes. But maybe you can. You, I think you might go through with it. My concern is, because it, that's where I'm at, if I do that, it's M2. And I just don't like that. Listen... If Bevo says he's um, looking for innovation, right? Yep. Does that mean he's going to come out and put Jack McRae in the midfield? Yeah. Yep. I, I know what you mean. Because what he's he's done that for the last ten years. He's put Jack McRae in the midfield. If he's coming out with innovation this week, it's not McRae in the midfield, is it? Well, Caleb Daniel, sixty percent CBAs last week. That's just overdoing it, mm. Bevo. Um, so Jack McRae, forty-one percent. Yeah, and if you're looking to change something, it's not what you've done the last 10 years then, is it? So Jack McRae has to go based on that. I think he can go anyway. Yeah. God. Well, he scored that 100 last week and we said it, it was the good. worst 100 we've ever seen from him. Yep. And then he did that. All right, Toddy wants to know, what's more important, fixing deadweight rookies like Chester Long, potentially Euland, uh, or getting Setterfield in? 
The cash pro- gen is still important. It is important, but the problem is if you're replacing a red dot with a rookie, mm. who's who, the rookie? Who is it? Yeah, that's the problem because that, that rookie problem. just turns you're, into another red. You're dot. either sending, you're either spending up for mm. them, yeah, to get one of the guys that you've missed that are good. Yep. Yes, mm. there's not anyone coming through that you click on with any confidence. It's a rookie crisis, cow. Yeah, he said it. To some extent, it is, but. <laughs> There's a few of them. They're just not scoring that well. Byron, who's more of a priority out of Constable, Setters, Zebul, and how is no one talking about stock up? Let's go going really well. Constable versus Zebul. Let's almost call those guys a bit of a like for like as well, such. It's Zebul. It's Zebul, isn't 100%. it? 100%. Yeah. Um, Setterfield, we sort of tried to talk about that there. And Stocker, so he's 512 now. Mm. He scored a 98 and an 81, so obviously very good on the weekend. Yeah. Um, got a break even of eighteen. Yeah, you could do it. Obviously, has the defender status. Yeah, like uh, there's risk associated, obviously. But like he was highly touted as a junior. He's yep. not just someone they've plucked from no man's land. Um, he's he's obviously um got a role, a clear role under Ross. Yep, loving it and scoring well. So yeah, he could potentially push an 80 average. Brad's got this one here. Is the role still there for McRae? He looks a bit lost in the dog's midfield, thinking of going up from McRae to Oliver or Brayshaw. Yeah. So that's where I'm okay with it. Oliver or Brayshaw, you're replacing your premium that you picked at the start of the year to be a top eight with someone that will be a top eight and much more locked into that. 100% that. Not only are they locked into their role in the midfield, they are just finding the ball. McRae's not... He's got no role... He's got no ball winning ability in there at the moment. Mm. He had like he had five kicks or something on the weekend. Yeah, disgusting. It is so. See, no, when you look at it, get him, get him out. So this year he's been at fifty percent of the CBAs. Yeah, mm. and that's basically it's it's worse because when he's not there, he sucks. Yeah, and that's where he basically starts to struggle even more. Yeah. So the flags I think were he's there got to go. The he's the got to go were there, and we. Some of us were stupid enough to ignore him. Me. Uh, Leanne, I love this question here from our friend in Kansas. Uh, who's more likely to keep scoring the way that started out, Setterfield or Zebel? And the part of the question that I like, where's the path of least disappointment? Oh, oh. well, when you mess around in these areas, yes, the disappointment is always just yep. creeping up on you. But I think neither of them are going to keep scoring this well. No, I agree. Like Setterfield's not going to average 120. I agree, but Setterfield will keep having 80, 90% of the CBAs. Yes. What's he got to do from here to be a win? 95 plus? Yeah. Does it need to be 100 plus? Oh, well, I think he goes 95 Given, given his at instant least. cash gen as well over the yeah. next month. Like, and then even if he drops off a bit. Unless he got injured, it's, it can't you, fail. You mm. could move him on to an underperformer. Yeah. Jack Look, they're both great options, but if you're looking for the the safest road, you just got to probably compare age demographic and go yep. Setterfield. Setterfield's the safer road, I think. Like, and is there a is there a world where North, like they could throw Zebel forward at any chance, like Aaron at Hall, any someone Aaron, go yep. Hall comes in, or there's an injury in their forward line. Like, I think it's unlikely, but yep. that's more likely to change then Setterfield's role Shannon's got the question here with Bevo being Bevo with the dogs mids again uh, again what chances do we think Baz Lenka Smith and McRae are to get for DPP by round six so I don't know the numbers on Baz Lenka but McRae was 10% round one 33% round two so even the 33% if he did that from here on that's not enough to get there so and it's probably Bevo being Bevo he probably does have a game where he's a hundred percent mid. Yeah, and so I wouldn't be banking on that and no, 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 no. letting your decisions be dictated. Like people no. might be going, "I'm holding McRae because he might get forward status." Yeah, no, McRae is just as likely to be on the back flank next week. Yep, Bailey Smith, thirty-two percent CBAs on the weekend. See, that's where it's just Bevo has lost the plot. Yeah, because um, Smith is everything you want in a modern day right. midfielder. Yeah, and he's not even in there. So instead, let's put um, helmets, more potato, yeah. Caleb Daniel in there. Yeah. For the second most behind Libertore. What are you doing, yeah, mate? Lost the plot. Never. Yeah. 
too much of the good stuff, I reckon, after his surf. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> Damien Hocking, what do I do with Jackson at R2? Keep him oh, there because he's oh, their number one ruck. No. Yes. Um, I don't have a lot of cash. Trade or hold and fix elsewhere. I think you've got to get off that one. Yeah. Um, can I just formally apologise to this um, gentleman because I've just started a campaign this morning <laughs> yeah. of getting Jackson as far as Jackson will be for Peel Thunder this week. As possible. Um, yeah, no, get off. Right. Okay. Uh, bash and bottom with Benny. Probably shouldn't have read that. Oh, one, I don't reckon. Oi, um, yoy, yoy. oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no. Callahan and Philippou to Rochelle and Stocker, playing the break-even game with a good score potential, or find another way to uh, find a way to get Chandler. Mm. I mean, it is a bit of a chase, but both of them have ticked a lot of boxes. Their roles, Their are, roles are, are really impressive. Rochelle's having like that little bit of a second year breakout. He, he is. is. He's yep. going at 95. Well, just the usage, isn't yeah. it? Like the usage is... Yeah, his role's awesome. Mm. Uh, okay, sort of answered this before, but Brandon, fixing rookies more important than getting players such as Setters and Dacos? I don't know. How bad Not, is your rookie yeah. situation? Like, you say fixing rookies, just and all then those you get in someone like Green who, you know, he just rolls the legs over yep. and slowly goes up. Like, Setterfield's going to go up more than... A rookie. Some yeah. of the rookies that we pick. Yeah. So as long as you're not sitting there with all red dots or something, mm. well, I think you're probably still focusing on the I, field. I think now is the time to get in those guys that we've still missed. Yes. Okay, your, your Zeeble, your Setterfield. We can still get those guys. We can. Mm. That, 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 that's what we need to do now before these rookies. I think don't, so. don't stress about the rookies yet. Mm. I think. Uh, priority trade out of Constable and Callahan with 200k from last week. And your options of what you can do there. Well, the constable for a defender is scoring be, really well. He's I'd fine. be holding him and Callahan up with 200k to someone. Mm. That someone hard to get to setters now. Yeah, yeah, you miss him. You might have had to have done something with your other trade. Yeah. <coughs> is there anyone else in that range? No, not really. No, unless it's then a DPP. You put one of your mid forwards in and get Zebel. That's a play. Knowing that in round ahead of round six, you're then putting that DPP back in your forward line. Zebel goes to the back line, and then you're maybe getting rid of Constable at that time, who's done his job to that point. Yes, Constable's averaging eighty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He's fine. One hundred percent, he's fine. Yeah, and he was better this week too. So there's, I don't think. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Touch wood. Yeah, we don't have that stress no, he's on. He's okay. Mm. Uh, is she to set a field a must? If you can, Andrew. If you can. You'd want to be doing that. It's a huge upgrade. It's a massive upgrade. Mm-hmm. Right, we haven't talked about Dunkley really today. Oh. But man. Carlton legend number 11, thoughts on Dunkley and Sheed out to Zebel and LDU? See, so this is well, where it gets tempting. Why not? Why not? See, Dunkley I still have yeah. rated way ahead of Zebel. Okay. Right? Yes. However... When you factor in the amount of cash that generates... And the move to the back line. Yeah. It could be considered. If you're in a luxury position where you haven't been getting many injuries, you could look at something like that. So he's got a break even of 135, Dunkley? Dunkley comes good. It's it's Dunkley. Like I've seen him for long enough, even though he's at a new club and stuff, the role's there. He might just... Need a couple more weeks to find his feet. He still scored 97. Look, if he had one more kick, we're probably not even talking about it. Mm. Give us two to Cole out of these guys. Horn, Francis, Bruin and Sheed. So it's Horn, Francis two forwards and Bruin. There. Yeah. Me first. Yep. As long as you're getting Sheed's what still. you want with that. I guess that's the other <clears> side <throat> of it. Yeah. Who would you be more comfortable holding then? Out of Horn, Francis and Bruin. Yeah. Um, Horn, Francis, clearly for me. Oh, 100%. But Sheed, you'd be more comfortable to hold as yeah, well. Yeah, just to watch him tick over for another 70. But then it's clogging up a midfield spot. Yada, yeah, yada, yada. It's, I'd, a, it's I'd a tough be, question. I'd still be looking to get rid of Sheed next week. I'd just get rid of the other two first. They're the ones dropping in price. Yeah, and that's the that's the other side of it. They're dropping. At least Sheed is maintaining his, his, yeah. maintaining his, his bad his mid price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That. yeah. Uh, Jack, is he with a real deal? Can he sustain his scoring? Maybe not sustain, but I think he's real deal to be... Triple figure average. Like oh, that eye. Yeah, he yeah. could, yeah, well he be could be 100. Remember he had this and he was mega early, then dropped off yeah. as the season went on. Yeah. So Which may happen again, but 
Three trades a week. Buys come up. Yep. You can flick him then. Thomas is saying, can we sideways to set a field? So who are you comfortable doing that with? Then that is a sheet. So lock that. Yeah, that's a done and dusted. I don't know anyone else that's that around 700. That no. If you've got someone at 700, they haven't performed how you I agree. wanted them to. Yeah. Yeah. So you and could. set a field you could do yeah. that with. Yeah. His price is just going up so rapidly at the moment that it'll be significant. If the. To Pay off. If I that think. sideways is like from one of those premiums, mm. it's it's more of a question. I know you've ticked off McRae. Yes, I have. But if it's, I don't know, I can't even think of names. No, because there's there no there. one really in that bracket at the moment. you just got to look at the names that we found to maybe fix up Jack Steele with. Yeah. The only ones going down are those two, yeah. Green and... Um, and the sideways, it's not so much side, sideways either because you... Got to have some coin, but like a warp, where you'd be quite happy to go from him. Yeah, up definitely. If that was your way to do yep. it. Yep. You'd be rolling yep. those Callahan, as we mentioned yeah, before. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right. Just getting through a few more but questions. But even on that, like Callahan, I'd love to go Callahan to Setterfield. Oh yeah. I'm gonna need a a loan off you, Roy, yes, to yeah. get that done. Yeah. Bing's. Significant coin. Yes. Bing's got Bailey Dale and Press. You need to go. Do I go Warple and Sicily? Yeah. Or, and I don't know the rest of your team, but would uh, Setterfield and Day be a better option? I'm a big fan of those two days. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'd probably go that way. Yep. I reckon. If that can work for you. Mm. See what else you've got there. Um, Simon Scott, does going still, why does going still to Setterfield feel so gross? It, yeah, oh, I can imagine. Dirty, it. dirty mate. It's, you've picked it's a dude. Setterfield. That's why I'd, I'd really want to be going to. A premium. Yeah. But. And not a guy averaging 126. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. All, all the cash that yeah. comes with it. Is that our old school thinking? <sighs> Potentially. Who knows? Centerfield should be uh, trending based on this. Yeah. Josh wants to know, is Brad Crouch an option with Steel out? Yeah. I thought about that last night. Yeah. He's going to go big. He racks. Yeah. He'll, be, he'll have a really good few weeks. So he's going at 101 already this year. Yep. And he's about to turn it up a notch. Yep. He came home last year averaging like 125 in the last month. Yeah. Expect that. Yep. Right. Here we go. If you somehow overlook Sheasel, WTF, is it too late to jump on now? No. He's got a break even of negative 40. Yeah. He just yeah. went up 108k. In one week. <laughs> right? Yeah. And he'll do it again this he week. He will. Um, no, it's not too late. He's an underpriced premium. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's an underpriced premium. That you missed. Yeah. And he's an absolute bargain. Get on. Get on. Wow. Yep. Yep. No, you should. Stuff it. He's just a gun. Yep. And the roll. Yep. He's so good. Uh, Tom, do I get rid of McGrath for Sicily and get rid of <sighs> Bont to get Setterfield? I'd hold on the McGrath to Sicily move. One point <laughs> better, Cal, this week. He was. hate when that happens. <laughs> Look, Bond. Bond can go. Yeah, he's so Bond. He's, he's part of the Bevo regime. He is, yep. and he scored a couple of nineties. Um, but it's not quite enough for that role, that position in your side. Just get rid of the bulldog headaches. Yeah, we don't know what they're going to do. It's like the Geelong headache. They're bulldog so headache is there as well. Cats inconsistent. And dogs. You could do it. You could actually do it in one move if you just got rid of Bevo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then they'd all be fine. Yeah. Mm. All right, uh, Lockie. I held Stuart. Are Stocker and Setters good ins for Callahan and Stewart? Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I, I'm just very scared about fully ticking off this Stocker. Stocker, I'm with move. you. Yeah. Um, but because maybe mean, maybe they've had it pretty good. He's looked outstanding. Yeah, maybe Saints two games. Have had it good. Great, two easy little matchups for him. They're yeah. not going to get it good this week after playing against the uh, the mighty all conquering Bombers. Oh, oh geez, he's having a day he's out. So up and about, isn't he ever? <laughs> It's good. Can they do this for two weeks? So Stocker's got another good week here. in him then. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do we think North can keep winning? This week I do. Yeah, yeah. they could be, what, three and zip? Three and zip. Like the Bombers. Oh, my wow. goodness. What That's would that have been, Payne? Are the Bombers a chance to play a team not in the bottom four? Aren't they? Haven't they the, been They're big? keeping them in the bottom four because they keep beating them, Cow. <sighs> haven't they been big on wanting them to get off to a good start? Yeah. 
That's why the draw yeah. so heavily favours him. Yeah. He's got easy games coming up. Anzac Day's not far around the corner either. Oh, oh there's a that'll be a great <laughs> rub <laughs> that'll be. Uh, should I trade in Nick Dacos or Sicily? Dacos. 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 Go the better player. No question. Is it time for Doc to go? No. no. <gasps> oh, no. Okay. Can, is there a block button? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, Goodness me. Disrespect. Bounce back, Doc, this week. Bounce back, Doc, this week. Against GWS. Against GWS. Lock it in. Lock in. Uh, any captain research yet, Cow? I've had a little bit of a look at it. I don't mind the Doc one, um, yes. but that's a way. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't really gone into no. the nuts and bolts of it yet, but um, Sheezel is a legit play, I think, as a vice captain. I had Doc as my VC, so I always watch Doc closely because mm. he's one of my favourite players. He was just not himself the other night. He yeah. was it always um, it either bounced the wrong way for him or he was a little bit like he was a half a step off where he's usually at. And he didn't lay a tackle either. I know he's not a huge tackler, but yeah, he was just a bit off the other day. Early days, Laird has a very tough match up against Port. Yep. Okay, I'm not not sure where I sit on that. Brayshaw against the Eagles, have, he's never done anything. No, sounds easy. Dunkley. In the revenge game, oh, Roy, revenge on game. Thursday night, so St Kilda had four... He doesn't have to do too much hard work. St Kilda had four guys that went over 110 it's against the Bulldogs. The dogs, mate. There's no hard work involved. No. Nah. So there could be... It's a little bit of an out there How one. innovative is he going to be? That's the thing. With Dunkley. Is he going to put a leash on that old dog and keep him bloody... Who with? McRae, probably. <laughs> innovative. Cray. Yeah, well, that's what he does. McRae. I wear their shorts backwards. You're gonna yeah. hold. I'm gonna hold you to no touches, mate. As long as you keep dunks under ten. Yep. He I'll give you a ten coaches vote. He would have thought of that while he's in a barrel. Yeah. It would have just come to him. <laughs> Hanging ten. <laughs> All right. Salt water in his hand. <laughs> You'll be able to hear Calvin's captains on Thursday night in our live show. So make sure you're tuning into that. That is a streaming on afl.com.au and the AFL live app from 6.15. Uh, as we get ready for the Thursday night footy. Yep. Which is... That's a bloody stressful. The Bulldogs and the Lions. Why can't we have a game that's irrelevant to our teams <laughs> on a Thursday night? Yeah. We go off air... Scramble, scramble. Make mistakes. Make mistakes. And it's going to be a big scramble again this week. Got to think about that, VC. I've got two dogs on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. Goodness, I need to have a good think about that. So keep clicking back to afl.com.au for all the great fantasy content this week and all the news as well because uh, you've got to be across it. Mm. Injuries. Yeah. Suspensions. Yeah. Players that are being dropped, the mix-up of the midfield at Fremantle to see that old Darcy, key forward for the rest of the year. <laughs> could that happen? Yes, <laughs> it could happen. It could be the Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Catch up.